Italy has always had a special place in my heart, a land I've wandered many times. Yet tucked between Florence and Venice, there was one place I had never explored, Bologna. This vibrant city, alive with the energy of its students, shelters the world's oldest university beneath its ancient red brick towers. Narrow alleys drenched in color spill over with some of the country's most exquisite flavors. Beyond the medieval skyline, rolling hills cradle this gem of Italy. I wandered through its streets, savoring each step and each bite. And here's how it went. Good afternoon, guys, and welcome to Bologna, Italy. I have just come down the mountain country of San Marino and ended up back here in Bologna, which is a city right in between Florence and Venice. I have about a day and a half to explore this city and I'm super excited because I have never been to Bologna before. I've been to a lot of these other northern Italian cities, but this is my first time to Bologna. And Bologna is known to be an incredible food city. There's a lot of fresh ingredients that come from around this region here. And then there's a lot of really cool old architecture. There's tons of these old porticos that are little alleyways that are arched that take you through a lot of the city here. It's said that there's over 20 miles worth of these walkways that take you around to different places throughout the city. And you also get a lot of these medieval family towers that spire above the city here, which is very unique, showing off a lot of the old family's wealth here. So this afternoon, we're starting in Piazza Maggiore, right here in the center of the old town of Bologna. And we're starting right next to the fountain of Neptune. And around the Piazza Maggiore, you have a lot of the iconic buildings here. You have the San Pedrino Cathedral here. You have the Sala Borsa, and you have the Palazzo de Enzo all these historic buildings. And then from here, you have these winding old town streets that weave you through all of these marketplaces and very cool historic center place to start exploring today. So this afternoon, even though I'm starting here in the old town, there's a the church of San Luca that's about three miles outside of town. So it's quite a ways, but it's up on this nice hill. So I think it'll be a good way to start exploring Bologna is getting a nice overview of the city and you have porticos leading you from the old town almost all the way to San Luca and it'll take probably almost an hour to hike all the way there so yeah let's start the hike and then tomorrow we'll explore more of the old town of Bologna here. had about a two mile walk out of the city center of Bologna to the beginning of the porticos that'll take us up to San Luca. And from here we have about a mile left and we're going through these very classic porticos that date back to the 12th century. And they're these beautiful yellow and orange archways. That was quite the journey up here. I know it probably only took about 30 seconds on the video here, but it probably took about an hour and a half for me to walk all the way up to the Church of San Luca up here. And it's quite a lot of elevation gain too because you're up on this hill and you can look back down on Bologna, which is quite far away. So it's not even that great a view of the city because it's almost too far away from here. But we're up here at this beautiful San Luca church and it's quite the experience just going through that massive portico there, all of these gates that just cover it. Anyways, we've made it all the way up here. I think the church is open till about seven. So let's see if we can head into the church, see what it looks like on the inside and then enjoy the sunset and the view is overlooking Bologna and the countryside here.
so that was the Madonna San Luca Basilica up here on top of this hill overlooking Bologna and it's this beautiful Baroque style church and this addition was built in 1723 but this hill has been a pilgrimage site since the 12th century so it has quite a history here overlooking Bologna and then such a unique way to get up to this church taking that series of porticos and yeah so quite the journey up here I don't know if it's worth it if you only have a day in Bologna but if you have an extra day because it's gonna take you quite a few hours to come here and get back to town anyways I was smart and brought some picnic food up here so I'm gonna enjoy a picnic up here looking up at the San Luca church and over the Italian countryside here and enjoy my dinner and I'll see you guys tomorrow when we'll explore a little bit more of the old town center of Bologna near where we started in Piazza Maggiore tomorrow so I'll see you guys in the morning when we explore more Bologna Good morning guys and welcome back to Piazza Maggiore in the center of Bologna here and it's a Saturday and it's a beautiful sunny day and there's a bit of a festival going on here so there's a lot of people out and about this morning and I spent the first little part of the morning just walking around some of the old streets here getting some coffee and also I secured some of my tickets. There's a Bologna Welcome Center here in Piazza Maggiore where you can buy some of your tickets and especially on a busy Saturday like this there's limited time slots to go up the clock tower. So I bought my clock tower tickets for later this afternoon when we'll have some nice light. But I wanted to start off by heading into San Petronio Church which is the main dominant church here in the center square of Bologna and it was built in 1390 and it's dedicated to the patron saint of Bologna and it's a very interesting look to the outside. The bottom part has these beautiful marble sculptures and some ornate designs to them, but then you go up to the top part of the church here and it's still just this like brick. And I looked it up and it turns out that the front of the church, the facade, isn't even finished yet. So there's still some work on that. But supposedly it's one of the biggest and most impressive churches here in Bologna. So let's start by heading into San Petronio and checking out the main church in the center of Bologna. just entered the San Petronio church. This church just has these massive cavernous ceilings and along some of the cloisters on the edge here you just have all of this beautiful artwork and old paintings and then you have right at the front you have this nice altar with a golden crucifix on it and one of the most significant parts of this chapel however it has the world's largest sundial and there's this one line that goes down the side of the church here at a slight angle and then there's a small hole in the roof where the sun comes through and it was built in 1655 and it accurately tells you the exact day on the Gregorian calendar if you come at noon. So if you can plan your trip to visit San Petronio around 11 to about 1 p.m. you'll be able to see the sundial light just peek through that hole and illuminate this line on the floor that tells you what day of the year it is, which is just incredible. And once again, this church is not finished, and you can tell that when you're in here because a lot of the ceilings are actually quite blank, and then even some of the paintings seem to only be about halfway done because construction abruptly ended on San Petronio in about the mid-17th century. So yeah, let's keep walking around, check out a little bit more of the church here. There's lots of little details to look at all throughout. interior 
of the San Petronio Church and again just beautiful paintings. You have some nice stained glass windows in some of those cloisters but again still a lot of work to be done or that never got completely finished for whatever reason when they halted production of the church there. Anyways, from the San Petronio Church, if you exit out to the left here, there's a little alleyway and it'll take you down this row of porticos leading you to the oldest university in the world, the University of Bologna, which was founded in 1088. And you can enter and see the old anatomical theater, which was one of the old classrooms in the world's oldest university. So let's head down there and check that out. just entered the University of Bologna here and right as you enter there's this courtyard that has these two layers of these incredible archways that have tons and tons of these shields of arms. There's about 6,000 coat of arms lining all of the walls here and you have these really intricate paintings and it's really worth just walking around some of these porticos of the university here. But we're going to start by going to the anatomical theater which is where they started to dissect human bodies to learn a little bit more about the human figure and some of the anatomy of the human body. So let's head into the anatomical theater and see what that's like. So that was the inside of the anatomical theater and it was this beautiful wood paneled room that had these incredible sculptures of the human figure all around and some of the famous physicians that taught the human body here in the University of Bologna and just really fascinating right in the middle there's this marble slab where you can just picture they did the dissections of the human body to learn about the human form both for medical purposes with physicians but then also a lot of artists would use that too to learn about the human body as well so yeah absolutely fascinating little room and that costs an extra three euros to go in there but even if you don't want to pay the three euros to go in the anatomical theater even just walking around the inside of the university hallways here is absolutely free and you can see a lot of just this beautiful artwork and these coat of arms that just line the walls here so let's wander a little bit more through the university here and check out some of the artwork and the beautiful hallways that line this university That was really awesome to see one of the old lecture halls of one of the oldest continuous universities in the world. It's almost a thousand years old, the University of Bologna. And just the hallways were just so beautifully decorated. And again, just walking around the hallways is completely free, paying a little extra to do the anatomical theater, but not too expensive. So. Anyways, I've come back to the Piazza Maggiore here, which was just down the street from the University of Bologna. And off one of the side archways here is the Quadrilatero to the eastern side of the plaza. And in the Quadrilatero, you have a lot of like open air markets, a lot of really good restaurants. And again, the Bologna region is known to have some really good, authentic, fresh Italian food. So it's a fun little part of the old town here with just these winding little cobblestone alleys. So let's just go for a bit of a walking tour through the Quadrilatero district and just look at some of the good foods, maybe find a lunch. So yeah, let's walk.
just weaved my way through all of the winding walking streets of the Quattro district there and there's just tons of really cool cafes that are spilling into the these tiny narrow streets lots of beautiful restaurants and there was this market area where I got some ragu which is one of the famous dishes here in Bologna and then also stopped at one of the little cafes there had a cafe latte as I was just watching these streets of the Quattro and then as you're walking around weaving through these streets there's a bunch of these open fresh air markets where they're selling vegetables and they have fish and flowers and then there's a lot of these closed shops that have just a lot of artisan Italian food items like wine and different pastas and there's little bookshops and designer shops and it's really one of my favorite parts of the old town here just weaving through that district there and yeah just getting some good food but we've come out to the northern part of the Quattrilateral district to Via Rizzoli which is one of the main thoroughfares through the center of the old town here and then right at the end of the Via Rizzoli is the Asinelli Tower and another tower right next to it. Back in the day in Bologna, a lot of the wealthy families would show off their wealth by building these giant brick towers that would tower over the city. And back in the day, there were about a hundred of these towers just rising up above the old town of Bologna. And now there's only about 20 that remain. And this Asinelli is about 500 feet tall and it's one of the tallest and typically you're able to go up to the top of it and get some nice sweeping views of the city of Bologna but it looks like they're doing a little bit of renovation now so we won't be able to go up there today but hopefully if you visit in the future you'll be, they'll reopen that so you can go up the tower there and get some nice views overlooking Bologna and then the other the sister tower right next to it is like leaning a little bit so yeah kind of reminds me of the leaning tower of Pisa anyways very cool area to walk around. From here, I'm gonna head just a little bit further north through some of these winding old streets here. And there's a few of the remaining canals that used to go through Bologna here. And you get a sneak peek of a few of them through some special windows here in Bologna. And it's called, it's this little area called Little Venice. So let's kind of wander our way through the old town a little bit and try to find this little Venice area of Bologna. As I weave my way through these winding old streets of Bologna towards Little Venice, let me just tell you about the sponsor of today's video really quick, Olafly. Olafly is an eSIM company that does unlimited data plans in over 150 destinations. So wherever you're traveling or wherever you're going, Olafly will be there to be able to provide reliable, fast, high-speed internet for your phone and unlimited data packages. And as I'm traveling around to all of these places, I'm usually doing a lot of the research on the fly, Googling things and learning things as I go, being my own tour guide and having unlimited data allows me to look up things as I go and as much as I need to and then I'm also usually traveling fast and fairly spontaneously so as I'm traveling and on the road having unlimited data being able to book buses book last-minute hotels and figure out a lot of the logistics of my traveling as I go is really valuable and then also, as I'm doing the YouTube channel and sharing a lot of the travels on Instagram, having access to a lot of the social media and having, again, the unlimited data to upload high-res images, high-res videos, and even use it as a hotspot if I need to access internet on my computer, I can use the Olafly's unlimited data plans to be able to continue to share a lot of these travels and adventures with you guys. And I don't have to get physical eSIMs going to little markets to try to find places to buy the sims but i can go on the olafly app and download the eSIM before i even enter the country or region and for the next month i'm in europe so i was able to buy a europe data pack that covers all of the countries that i'm going to in europe so it was just one easy eSIM that gets me unlimited data throughout all of Europe for the next month. So if you wanna try Olafly, if you're going to any travel destinations and you don't wanna to have to deal with physical sims or high fees with your network, you can try out Olafly below in the description. There's a 10% coupon code if you use the link down there that'll get you unlimited data as you're traveling to be able to keep in touch with friends and family, share the journey and do logistical planning while you're traveling.
as I've just walked about four or five blocks north of the old town of Bologna here to what they call the Little Venice of Bologna. And Bologna used to have a whole series of these canals that would bring water to and from people's houses. Like there was a whole grid of this water system. Most of them have been covered up and there's only a few that remain here. And right in this little area of town, there's a few bridges that go over the canal so you can get a look over it. But then there's this little secret door on the other side, Canal de Rino, where you can push open this like little square hole in the wall and get like a little window peek through down into the canal. But there's also a long line for that little window peek. So if you don't want to wait in line, you just want to see some of the canals, you can see them here, or you can wait for that line over there, or you could come in probably earlier in the morning when there'd be less people to get that view looking through the window down at the canal. But I mean, if you've done Venice and I'm going to Venice tomorrow and I've been there before, I mean, it's not that special, but you do get these just nice Italian villa colors and a little trickling water that just laps against the orange buildings here. So anyways, I'm gonna head back down towards the city center and I think there are just a few more churches that we could check out if we have time before our 520 clock tower time where we're gonna go up and get a nice view overlooking Bologna. So let's head back to the city center and see if we have time for one of those churches. just walked back across the old town of Bologna, past the Piazza Maggiore, and south a little bit to San Domenico Church, which is just a few blocks from Piazza Maggiore, and actually quite close to that university we explored earlier. And this is a historic church built in the 1200s, and although it's not that brilliant from the outside here, it just kind of has this brick facade, I think the interior is really beautiful and has a few, like, old, original Michelangelo sculptures from when he was just starting his career. So I'm gonna head in here and check out what San Domenico looks like on the inside. So that was the inside of the San Domenico church here and as you enter it just has these three naves that are going up and down the center of the church there and most of the main nave is mostly white with the ceiling but then halfway down you have these two side altars that are just completely covered in these beautiful intricate paintings and sculptures and just a very beautiful couple like side chapel altars as you walk down the main part of the church there. We are just about two blocks from Piazza Maggiore, so I'm gonna head back there. My timing for the clock tower is in about 10 minutes, so I'm gonna head back down to the main plaza and head up the clock tower and get one nice view overlooking the city of Bologna that we've just explored the last day and a half. So let's head back to Piazza Maggiore. just made it up to the top of the clock tower here and you just have these amazing 
360 degree views overlooking the old town of Bologna here. You can look down on the Plaza Maggiore that we've been exploring earlier and see a lot of the landmarks here. And you have just the massive San Patrino church there that we explored this morning and then way off on the hills here you can see the San Luca church that we hiked up last night for sunset and then from up here you just have this nice little viewing platform and a railing and you can look down on all of the old tiled homes and little narrow alleyways that we've been exploring all day throughout the old town of Bologna here and just the colorful orange and yellow buildings that make up the old town and you have this Italian flag waving in the wind here and just yeah very beautiful views and you can see some of those old wealthy merchant towers that we were exploring a little bit earlier too you can see the really tall Asinelli tower and then you can see a few of the other ones and again there's about 20 of them that remain throughout the city here so yeah let's just take in some of these beautiful views probably have about an hour and a half till sunset so we're just getting some nice harsh side light here that's just illuminating in this old brick skyline So that was the clock tower right in the middle of Piazza Maggiore and such a cool way to get an overview of the city. You get 360 degree views there and again you get to see these like tall towers that are so iconic of Bologna. You get to see the church and some of the piazzas and the winding little narrow streets. And then as you come down there when you buy the ticket for 10 euro there's a little bit of an art gallery that's included too so you could explore a little bit more in there check out some of the artwork in that little museum right beneath the clock tower so yeah very cool but the sun's gonna set in about an hour or so and i think i'm just gonna go back to those winding alleys and get some more food because the food was just so good here in bologna and just enjoy some of the piazzas here throughout the city so that about wraps up my time here in bologna there's a lot more churches that you could explore there's also some of these like government buildings right in the center of the piazza that I didn't really get a chance to check out too that I'm sure would be quite interesting and then a lot of just these piazzas and what's interesting about Bologna is there's not like great standout architecture and in fact even the main church there it's not even completely finished so you don't have this like Duomo type statement piece but you just have all of these really cool old medieval brick towers and brick churches and and then you have just all of these little winding alleyways with brightly colored facades of a lot of the houses and then really cool little shops and again it's definitely a foodie city there's so many good places to eat and little street side cafes and just such a cool vibe walking around Bologna so hopefully this video helped you plan a little bit of your time and trip and some of the things that you can do here in Bologna in the city in about a day and a half and if it helped you please like the video comment that it helped you and subscribe if you want to see more of my travels because tomorrow I'll be heading to Venice and then up to Slovenia and then checking out Europe for about the next few weeks here so yeah thanks for watching I'll see you guys next time in Venice <laughs>